Hello everyone and welcome to my inaugural how-to video. Tonight I'm going to show you the basics of turning a portable USB key drive into a powerful multi-purpose tool. We'll cover just the basics for now, including a Windows installer and utilities for testing memory and hard drives. Note that your Windows can be anything Vista or later. XP can be done, but is a lot more complicated. Here are the steps that we'll go through. Feel free to pause the video at any time if I'm going too fast for you. First, let's go download the tools we'll need. Be sure to note the, the web addresses that I'm browsing to. Okay, that's Memtest. This is C Tools. C Tools isn't quite as powerful as more advanced utilities like, say, Smart Mon Tools for Linux, but it's a lot easier to use. And it fits a good bit better into the basic theme of tonight's video. Oh, wow, that's a long license agreement. Well, I guess not really. It's still kind of annoying. Be sure to read it, though. And now Syslinux. Syslinux is really the glue that holds the whole thing together. I could be using Grub for DOS for everything, except I think Syslinux is a lot easier to deal with. Especially the config files are a lot more readable, I think. We'll get to that in a bit. Hopefully my audio is coming through pretty well. I'm not using a desktop microphone. I'm actually using my phone right now, but it's working, it seems to be working pretty well. Maybe I'll do another how-to later, telling you about all the tools that I'm using for video and audio recording. Yeah, I don't know what's up with this website. Seems a little bit crazy. You'll probably know what I mean when you go there and look around. Seems like everything is kind of generic. Okay, so those are all of our utilities. Next step is going to be to format the USB key and then copy our Windows files to it. You'll probably want a key that's at least, say, four to six gig or so, maybe eight gig to be safe. Make sure that you format it as FAT32. All 
Okay, there we go with that. Time to copy our Windows files. Now you can either copy right from a DVD or do like I do and mount an ISO. It's one of the seriously amazing new features you get with Windows 8 is you can mount ISOs natively. God, I love that. It's so useful. Okay, here you're going to see that I do a little bit of time dilation. Sometimes the copying these files can take upwards of 15 minutes or so. And we are almost done. There we go. Okay. Now you go eject that. And next you're going to want to copy all of the files that we just downloaded. We'll copy files out of those zip files. Here's a full list. You want to copy the syslinux executable and then the files memdisk, menu.c32, and libutil.c32 from syslinux. Now, because I'm hosting my files on a network attached storage drive, I really can't open up these ISO files or zip files without copying them to the desktop, which is kind of a pain. That's one thing I'd really like to make a, a video on is how to set up a file server because you can do some really cool stuff really, really easily. Okay. So you're copying either Syslinux 32 for a 32-bit system or Syslinux 64 for a 64-bit system to the Windows System32 directory. And here we go with the other files. Feel free to again pause the video and make note of all these files and where they're located because it can get a little bit complicated. Syslinux is a really, really huge, huge, huge project. And to make this USB drive, we're 
All we need are just little teeny tiny pieces of it. Okay, that's it for Syslinux. Memtest is going to be a lot easier. It's just an ISO file inside of a zip file. And inside of that ISO file is a .img, which is just a floppy image. We're using the memdisk module for Syslinux to natively emulate a floppy disk. So it's going to load that IMG file right up. Now Ctools is easy because all you do is you just copy the whole, whole ISO file. Just make sure that if you rename it like I am, the, or sorry, rather, if you're going to use the syslint, the exact same name in syslinux that you just rename the iso file like i just did and then grub for dos you're just copying grub.exe see that wasn't so hard was it okay and that's all the file copying So let's see, we downloaded the files, we formatted the key, we copied the Windows files, we copied all the utility files. Now we're going to do one of the most complicated parts, which is editing the config files. What you're probably going to want to do is open all these up in Notepad like I am. The nice thing is .cfg and .lst files are usually just text anyhow. So you can go ahead and associate those with Notepad. I'm going to leave, try and leave each of these open for long enough to give you a decent chance of being able to copy these files out. And at some point I may even link them on YouTube. We'll see about that. I'm still new to the whole YouTube thing. So yeah, go ahead and make sure that you have syslinux.cfg, menu.lst, which is the default name for grub for DOS. This is going to be the file that will load the Windows installer. And then ctools.lst is going to be the one that will, of course, load ctools. See, this takes a little bit of time, but it's not nearly as hard as you might think. And believe me, it is going to be so worth it. Oop, accidentally dragged that on top of the exe file instead of copying it to the directory. That was silly. Okay, so that's basically it for that. Now what you're going to do is you are going to run syslinux which is just a command line tool that's going to actually put actually make the drive bootable you want to be super duper 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 sure you put in the right drive letter because if you put in the wrong one 
then you're probably going to screw something up. You definitely don't want to put C colon because that's going to screw everything up. And you see a black screen here because this is my UAC prompt. Because you do need to run this as an administrator. So the command is syslinux or in my case syslinux64.exe-ma and then the drive letter with a colon. In my case, e colon. So see, that's it. And we are done. So thank you so much for watching. And hopefully I will have my next how-to video up before too, 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 too long. Certainly let me know how it goes in the comment section. And if you have any criticism or any feedback, I would love to hear from you. You can also email me. You can find my address linked from my website, which is www.ndspace.net. So again, thank you so much, and I will see you later. Bye-bye.